guys, it's Dan, and it is that time of the month where I share with you guys the books that I had picked up for the past month. Um, first off, I want to talk about my, my July 2020. Now, I know 2020 has really put a lot of us through the ringer, but my 2020 especially really, really sucked. Um, I kind of contemplated whether I wanted to talk about this or not, just because I don't want people to think... I always feel like if you share something personal in your life on social networks, I always feel like people are going to judge you and they're going to think that you're doing it because you want to garner sympathy or you want to just get attention for it. And by all means, that is not my intent. I just wanted to share with you an experience, a life experience that I had that really sucked, that really just did not make my July 2020 all that great. Um, I know some of y'all probably don't want to sit here and listen to me talk about stuff like that, but you know, I'm going to share it with you anyways, because I feel like this is an opportunity for you to get to know me a little better. Um, this, this July, my father passed away on July 11th. I was sitting at home, it was Saturday morning, about midday, almost noon, it was probably like late morning, and I got a call from... The sheriff's office. He didn't say right away why he was calling. He just said, this is officer so-and-so. I can't even remember the guy's name. I was just in complete shock, you know, because you, you don't often get calls from the sheriff's office. And uh, he goes, you know, I'm here at your father's apartment. And, you know, I was like, oh, what's going on? And your father passed away early in the morning and it looked like he got up to go to the bathroom and then he just kind of fell over, just dropped dead on his way back to bed. And no, he didn't die from COVID. I know that's one of the first things people always ask me. They always assume is, uh, did he die from COVID? No, he didn't die from COVID. He um, died from natural causes, they say. Um, this is kind of weird because I, I, going on like movies and television, I just assume they autopsy every person when they die, but I guess they don't do that if they, they do like a physical examination of the outside of the body and then they determine whether there's a reason or a mysterious reason why they think somebody had died and they didn't feel it necessary. Um, I did request that they do do a COVID swab on him and they did do that, um, and he had tested negative for that and not that you care but here's a picture of my dad and me when I was a little kid now um my old man is the reason why I got into horror he was that he was an influence on me if it wasn't for him I wouldn't have had the love for horror that I have today um I used to watch a lot of horror movies growing up as a kid um my parents were really lenient. They were pretty pretty liberal when it came to that kind of thing. Um, you know, a lot of kids, like, wouldn't experience that. But my dad would let me watch horror movies. And I will admit, <laughs> especially Nightmare on Elm Street, I watched, uh, watched kind of like this, you know, because I was just a little kid. And I was super terrified because it was super scary. But, you know, my dad was pretty cool about that stuff. And... He knew I had a limit or a reach of what I could tolerate and all that. And I have a lot of great memories of stuff like that. Um, I kind of picked up reading horror because I picked up some of my dad's like horror books and true crime encyclopedias and stuff like that. So yeah, um, it really sucks. I still don't know. I mean, I'm still kind of processing everything, going through the grief and all of that. And, uh, I kind of expressed my grief by <laughs> buying books. It was part of it. So I, I kind of have, like, a stack of books here. Um, not, but not only that, it wasn't just that, but, like, on the weekend, I was set to bury my father and lay my father to rest. My my 12-year-old son developed an upper respiratory infection and let me tell you I was already going through a tough time like dealing with the death of my father and I never really knew what a convoluted and such a 
drawn out process it is to lay your family member to rest because um, when my mother had passed away, my mother had passed away back in 2000 and my father had took the responsibility of doing all that so I had very little to do with that process so being that I'm the only child and his sibling lives far away it was left up to me to handle all the arrangements and everything and I went ahead and had him cremated and but like to get not to get off too topic but you know when you if you have time to go see your parent or a loved one that you don't get the chance to see too often do it don't hesitate don't think you have all the time in the world because you know let's face it life goes by way too fast we always think there's plenty of time in this life but life flies by in a blink of an eye and it's over before you know it but yeah um it was uh it was it's a lot and it, it took a very long time to process everything and have to deal with the funeral home and all that and and then like the right before my father was to be laid rest my son got an upper respiratory infection and of course you know we i i really didn't think that it was covid me and my my wife didn't really think it was covid either because um, yes, there are people who are asymptomatic, but if he really had COVID, I think me or her would have had symptoms too. So it wouldn't have been just my boy being sick. And he's 12, and he's kind of a trooper. Like, he'll, like, suffer and not really say anything, no matter how sick he feels. He He's kind of just that way. He kind of keeps a lot of stuff to himself. And he was pretty well off and we took him to the doctors and the doctor I trust his pediatrician because he's a really great doctor and he's like first examination he's like this is this is not COVID I can tell just by looking at him and said it was some kind of a uh, throat infection called Miraxila which I had never heard of and he was saying how that they don't have a swab for that kind of culture swab for that but then um, he gave him an antibiotic for that, but then it slowly got worse and progressively worse where he developed pneumonia. And, and this is another thing, like we tried to get a COVID test done on him because the summer camp that he is at was like, we think he might have COVID because he has some of the symptoms. And let me tell you, if you do not have enough symptoms, they will deny you a COVID test. So yeah, that's it's been a really rough July for me, and I kind of expressed my grief. Well, I'm not going to say, some of these books, like, okay, for instance, I purchased um, Touch the Night by Max Booth III. This was a pre-order. I ordered this in June, so I can't say that this is a product of my grief shopping, but... Yeah, and I had never read anything by Max Booth the Third. I know he's really, really super prevalent in the horror podcast community. Um, he has his own publishing uh, company called Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, and um, he had hyped this on so many different podcasts. So I was like, you know what? I'm like, I am going to check out and he gave a bookmark with that i'm going to check out his book even though i've never read him before i like his sense of humor he's kind of got like a sick sense of humor sick and twisted kind of sense of humor that i can kind of relate to like i think he's kind of funny he seems like a really great yeah. guy he seems really funny and he's somebody that i could see myself being friends with so yeah i was like you know what he seems like a cool guy i like his sense of humor and i like the way he talks about things so I'm like I'm definitely going to check out this book he keeps raving about and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it but um there's the back cover but this cover is absolutely beautiful um some it's stranger things in Texas chainsaw massacre unite to form a blood-soaked matrimony of violence and corruption something sinister is hiding in the small town of Percy Indiana and 12 year old Joshua Washington and Alonzo Jones are about to find themselves up close and personal with it after a harmless night of petty property damage leads to the unthinkable the red and blue lights of a cop car are the last things these boys want to see especially a cop car driven by something not quite human and I'm not going to talk too much more about that because I know how boring like synopsis can be but yeah definitely check this out if you're if that entices you at all I mean it sounded great to me when he kept raving about it and it sounds inter like I said it sounds interesting to me um, but that's the only real horror book that I had gotten 
Um, I did order other other horror books. Uh, Flame Tree Press. Um, they had a post on Twitter that they had like water damage, like flood damage. And then shortly after that, July 4th came and they had this mega blowout sale where they were giving away books for paperback books for four dollars a book and hardcovers for five bucks. Um, and it was like if you spent 20 or 25 bucks, you got free shipping. So, um, I was like, you know, I felt bad for their loss, and I, I've already gotten a few of their arcs, and I was like, yeah, I'm like, I know I'm already interested in the number of authors that they have, so I ordered a number of books, but for some reason, they just didn't come, and I was kind of hoping I would have them before the end of the month, so you're probably not going to see those until next month, and I'm probably going to do like a flame tree video all by itself of unboxing those because, and I finally, I reached out to them numerous emails because I'm like, this is like the first time I've ever really pub like bought books directly from a publisher. I'm, I, I will admit I'm spoilt by Amazon because Amazon has their one two day delivery and you order it and you get it in no time flat. So, um, yeah, I kind of, I waited and I knew how long it was going to take with Max Booth's book. So, like, I figured, well, I'll wait a little bit. I don't want to be, like, that guy who's, like, pestering them, like, hey, where are my books? But I sent them a number of messages because they charged me the shipping and handling anyways, even though part of the bargain was you spent X amount of dollars and you got free shipping. And they just kept sending me, like, brief replies saying, we'll look into it. And then I eventually got one that says, yeah, we'll give you back your free shipping and handling. But then they never did. And so I ended up having to CC in, like, two to three emails related to their company. Because I'm like, hey, what's going on with my order? Because it's taken so long. And I'm like, I, you guys gave me these brief replies and I'm like not trying to be a pest or anything, but what the hell is going on? Am I getting my shipping back? Am I getting my books sometime eventually? And the guy eventually wrote back today and he was like, hey, um, the whole July 4th was supposed to be a celebration because we got a new American company we're working with to produce books for us. And for some reason, they have two trucks of books that are stalled someplace, and that was the reason for the delay. And I was like, okay, well, just as long as I'm going to get my books soon, you know, because it's been almost a month, you know. So, yeah, those, I, like I said, when I get those, I will have to share those with you guys when they come in eventually. I'm thinking it's going to be another week or two. And then I ordered, I'm not going to reveal who the author was, but I took a chance on another author and I bought a book directly from an author that one I've heard a lot about from the indie horror community and a lot of people I'm going on everybody else's recommendation that this is going to be a good book and I just figured you know I've befriended this guy on Twitter and I think he's pretty cool I like his his outlook on stuff and the way his views on different things and I can kind of relate to him so I was like you know what I'll take a shot and buy one of his books too and I guess there's like a flub, like he mailed out a bunch of books and they're kind of held up someplace in the postal system. So that's another one I'm going to have to wait until next month to share with you guys. But um, if you're not about comics, you might as well stop now because I got a stack of comics. This is what I, this is what I bought and this month. Um, of course, I'm always raving about how I wanted to read all the Jonathan Hickman, the Dawn of X books. So I got Marauders Volume 1. I also picked up from Ollie's a couple of books. I got Battle World, Marvel Zombies, Spider Women. This one kind of ties in with the whole Spider-Verse and all that. And then I also got... Excalibur Volume 1, Dawn of X, so. And then I've got Age of Ultron versus Marvel Zombies. And also from Ollie's, I picked up uh, a Superman Action Comics, Volume 5, What Lies Beneath. And then another War Zones. These tie into their Marvel Secret Wars Infinity Gauntlet. And this one kind of looks interesting too. So yeah, I really, um, I've read a few of the War Zones for the Secret Wars. 
And if you're not familiar with that, Marvel's second time around with the Secret Wars, or maybe it's their third time around at this point, because they had the Secret Wars in the 80s, then they had Secret Wars 2, then they did another Secret Wars that was kind of a more modern one. So maybe this is like the fourth Secret Wars, but it was a whole restructuring where they combined all the alternate realities of the Marvel Universe and each world became fractured and it was like the whole Avengers Times Runs Out storyline kind of like in enveloped this and it was kind of like some of these worlds were being destroyed and some of them were being combined into the full-on one universe so it was kind of an interesting thing and I'm always one for alternate like realities so like that's why I really enjoyed the Warzone books I thought they were kind of fun but yeah um not only that but because there's if you haven't been paying attention to the internet there's this whole delay with the postal system the whole postal system is kind of uh really been really slower than normal lately so i've got a bunch of books coming from authors for reading and reviewing and i'm going to i've got so many that just came in today so i think i'm going to make a one-shot video and share with you all the books that i got today and some from the other day because you know i might as well just instead of making individual videos i'm just going to do a one-shot unboxing of indie horror author books but yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, the only link I'm going to throw down is I'm probably going to throw down a general link for War Zones and you guys for Amazon. And I'm going to throw down my coffee link if you don't mind donating a dollar or two. I finally hit my subscriber goal of 666 subscribers. I'm actually surpassed that by the time of filming this. So that's super cool. I really appreciate all the folks that have subscribed. I appreciate the people that are buying stuff through my links. And those of you who have donated to my channel, Coffee Link, greatly appreciate it. So if you came here looking for book reviews, whether they're comics or horror or whatnot, please hit that subscriber button and while you're there, hit that notification bell. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for letting me vent and just talk that out. I really appreciate it if you made it this far because I know sometimes people just, no, ain't nobody got time for that, you know, so... I do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And until next time, this has been Dan. Be good to each other.